Not that funny. <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. Yes, Beyonce was in a movie, it's called The Fighting Temptations. But that is not the movie or the Beyonce we are talking about today. The movie and the Beyonce we are talking about today is this one. Yes, yes, yeah, I know you have many questions. First of all, who is that? That's not the Beyonce we know, that's not my Queen B. Bon and also, why does the movie look like it was shot on a flip phone? Don't worry, I'm here to answer all your questions and so stick around, it's going to be a long ride. Make sure you watch to the end because I have a big surprise for you at the end. There's no surprise at the end, but please watch to the end so that the algorithm will make me famous, okay? I beg, I beg. That woman over there is called Nadia Buari. Now, if you're Ghanaian or Nigerian, this woman needs no introduction. You've seen her in many movies, or you know her as Nadia Buari, who does not eat Gary, as Gibanj said on Oliver Twist. And most of all, you know her from her famous relationship with Nollywood's baddest boy, Jim Ike. <laughs> Oh my god, that was an error, bro. That was an error, yo. You already know that Ghana and Nigeria collaboration is the dopest on the continent. And these days, you can find Nadia Buari on TikTok. Yes! Yes, I'm bored. I'll do anything with anybody. If somebody asks me to do something. Yes, that's that's your beloved Nadia Buari, your childhood crush. Now, this movie is called Ciara and Beyonce. And it's one of those classic Ghanaian movies that was everywhere when it came out. Especially the song. Life, so unfair. So unfeeling, all this Listen, as a Ghanaian, if you remember that song, you should be married and unemployed by now because there's no job. The economy is in shambles. If you're wondering who the fuck that is, uh, that is Ciara, played by Ghanaian actress Jackie Apia, who has aged very, very well. And yes, you can also find her on TikTok. I have always thought that you don't have tattoos anywhere. No. Honey, would you put a bumper sticker on a Bentley? <laughs> ah, sweet, sweet Jackie. She's more beautiful now than when she was younger. Amazing. Now listen, this movie, Ciara and Beyonce, is, is great, okay? It's great in all ways. Like, it's a mixture of everything. I don't remember it being so insane because maybe I was a kid, but watching it again, oh my God, listen. Let, let, let's get into the movie. So the movie opens with this scene over here with many cars and bodyguards because as you can see, the Beyonce in this movie is the president's daughter. And so of course, she has to be a rich, entitled bitch. Uh, I don't know how president's daughters are. <laughs> But in this movie, she's a bitch. So Beyonce walks out of her presidential car and walks into her room, which has the most amount of furniture I've ever seen in anybody's room. Like, what do you need all these chairs for? Like, there's a sofa and a chair back to back. And what's the point of that chair? Like, what's the person sitting there going to be doing? Looking at the mirror. But I guess it's not too far from real life, how, you know, government spends too much money on things they don't need. You know, this is the president's daughter in the movie, so... So this entire intro scene is to establish the fact that once again, she's the president's daughter and she's a bitch. And so she does a lot of interesting things like lying down for a bit, you know, getting up to take off her blouse, changing into another shirt, you know, all the things that makes movies interesting. Why is she changing like that? Is she not supposed to be alone? I mean, I get that she probably doesn't want to show her ass on camera or whatever, but like, it's still, it's a movie, you're supposed to act like you're alone. So if you're alone, is that how, is that how you change? Because girls only change like that when there's somebody else in the room. And I know there are other people in the room, but once again, it's a movie. It's supposed to act like it's real. It's not that I want to see Nadia Barry's asshole, okay? Let's be guided in the comments. I know some of you are thinking that. You know, I'm just pointing out the technicalities. It's a movie, you understand? So she's supposed to change as if nobody's over there, you know? You know, I don't know why they didn't do that, but okay. Also, I'm very sure Nadia Barry has showed her ass in other movies. So I don't know, you know, I mean, I'm not... <laughs> Let's move on. So yeah, they have this long boring intro to show that she's rich But the real comedy starts when her friend who was also supposed to be rich probably uh, You know like a minister's daughter or something comes to visit her and her very first lines in the movie are this Oh, the president's daughter Be, be, be Girl, <laughs> hi, hi. you can say that again 
and again, and again. again. And yeah, say it again and again and again so that the viewers will know that she's the president's daughter. Even though they are written it in the beginning that Beyonce, the president's daughter. You have to say it again because the viewers are dumb, okay? The viewers are dumb. So I say, say it again. I don't know who greets their friend like that. Like, controller is a, a, a pastor's son. I'm a pastor's kid. If I see him, will I say, controller, a pastor's son. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a good time to talk about the dialogue in the movie and the dialogue in like a lot of these movies back then like a lot of Ghanaian and Nigerian movies back then Am I right for all honesty? Of course! What do you think my chances are in the government? I mean the parliament to be precise Optimistic! It's like they had to talk a certain way and try and polish it up and you know What do you think my chances are in, in, in government and in parliament? So yeah, uh, Beyonce wants to be in, in government, in parliament. Now I have to mention that this information completely useless throughout the entire movie like doesn't appear again this is just conversation between she and her friends like there's no storyline where she tries to go to nothing like that once again the, the conversation over here is to drive it into your brain that she is the president's daughter politics in this country is no longer survival of the fittest mm -hmm. it has rather become a game for caliber politics in this country is no longer a survival of the fittest is the <laughs> you don't worry you've got the Speaker of Parliament's daughter for a friend, I will pull the springs. That's my girl, I trust you. Hey, <laughs> give it to me. Hey, <laughs> yay. <laughs> this, this is what I'm saying. What the fuck is that? <laughs> like the dialogue is so exaggerated. Hey, <laughs> give it to me. Hey, <laughs> yay. <laughs> hey, that's my girl. Hey, give it to me. Is that how rich girls talk? I mean, I've hung around a couple of rich bougie girls, but I've never seen anything like this. But this is what I'm saying about these movies. They needed to show you that these girls are rich girls. Even after everything they've said, they had to put their, hey, give it to me, because that's what rich girls do. I don't know. In politics, it takes much more than that. I mean, gone are the days of Kwame and Koma, the Zig of Nigeria, among others, who rattled the podium with well-orchestrated oratory, spies with raw intelligence and laudable ideas. Who talks like this? Who? Who talks like this to their friends? Who? But today, in politics, all that there is is blackmail. In politics. Yeah, she's right, because politics is not the way it used to be, okay? Like in Kwame and Kuma's time, okay? Now it's... It's too shady, okay? That's politics. In politics. That entire conversation goes on for so long. All the information in that dialogue is completely useless to the movie, okay? Completely. None of it comes back in any way. As a matter of fact, you are speaking to a member of parliament. Yay! So now we move on to the next scene, which is the main point of conflict of the movie. This is the scene where the story starts to move. This is where the movie should have begun. It should have cut out all that fucking thing in the, in the beginning. And this scene... That's all I can say about it. Let's watch it. I'm no sense, guys. Where is the money? Which money? Where is the money? What money? Fuck! Ah! Ah! So now we are introduced to Raj, played by Van Vika, who gets robbed and shot in broad daylight in Accra, which is. You know, I mean, you can get robbed by getting shot like that. You know. And that is Sierra, who happened to be at the scene of the robbery. Why did you have to shoot an extra shot? Are you trying to draw attention to yourself? Oh, I know why, because once again, they have to show you. Okay, they have to show you, put it in front of you like this. These people are armed robbers, okay? They, ha they have guns, and so they're going to shoot an extra shot in the sky to draw attention to themselves after committing a crime. Now, before we go further, let's all keep in mind the fact that this guy just got shot twice in the chest. <laughs> Ah, Van Vika, they shot you over here. The blood is over here. So why are you holding your, your stomach over here? What's going on? So Sierra wanted to run away like a bad person, but Van Vika, with two bullets inside him, starts calling for help, help. And then she comes to help him and ask him the question of the century. <laughs> I, I know it looks like he died, but he's not dead, okay? He's alive, don't worry. Van Vika is alive. Are you okay? That's not a question. I know it sounds dumb, okay? You just saw him get shot. I asked him, are you okay? But that's not a question, okay? It's coming up. Uh, are you okay? Uh, can you drive? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god, guy who just got shot twice in the chest. Can you drive? <laughs> oh my god, I'm dying. Help me, help me. Are you okay? Yeah. Um, help me, I'm dying. Uh, uh. Can you drive? What? What kind of stupid question is that? Are you foolish? Can't you see that they just shot me? You're asking me if I can drive. Even if I can drive, what, what can I do at this point in time? Uh, uh, you are a very foolish girl. That's why they fuck you up in a movie. You are so foolish. Uh, now take note of Amvika's face over here, okay? Very fresh and very clean. So Sierra goes and gets a taxi. She comes back and Raj is still over there rolling on the floor. Keep in mind once again, he got shot twice. Yeah, hurry up, hurry up. You okay? Now, I might be the dumbest person in the country when it comes to health, but even I know that if somebody is losing blood, you sit with them and apply pressure on where the blood is until they get to the hospital. Is that not what, is that, is that, listen, let me know if I'm wrong, okay, once again, when it comes to health, I'm completely dumb, I don't take care of myself at all. But Sierra doesn't do that, okay, she goes to sit in the front because she's a lady, and she doesn't want to get blood on her black clothes. Now, they get to the hospital, and all of a sudden, Van Vickers face is, is quite different. Once again, I'm very dumb when it comes to health. Maybe, you know, you can start bleeding from his mouth after not bleeding from his mouth for so long. Who brought him here? Now, it's very important that we recap a couple of details over here because moving forward, it gets a little bit confusing. Now, we already know that Raj has been shot two times in the chest. It even looks like the neck. It looks like they shot him in the neck a little bit, but the blood on, in the movies is, is on the chest. So, yeah, on the chest. He was on the floor over there for all that time where Sierra saw him, asked him the stupid questions. She went away to look for the taxi driver, came, they put him in the taxi, she sat in the Front and I took him to the hospital. He's still alive. No pressure on the blood, no form of first aid whatsoever. He's still alive. Now they get to the hospital to give him treatment and the nurse says this. I hope you came in with a police report. Police report? No, I'm sorry. The doctor cannot attend to him without a police report. All right, so the doctor cannot attend to him without a police report. First of all, that statement is not factual because I asked a real doctor in real life, shouts to my guy, Mr. Senegal, who is a doctor. I don't know your hospital, I would have plugged it, but I don't know your hospital. But according to him, they may require a police report, but they can still treat you without it. They don't need it to save your life. They just need it because, you know, criminal stuff or whatever, whatever, paperwork. Now, at this point, the so below and the tomato paste was finished, as you can see over here and also the girl pulled his shirt down and the chest looked clean <laughs> this guy is probably wolverine or something because there's gunshot wounds don't exist and also he's still alive we can't do anything without a police report can't you see a diamond line before you listen ghana's healthcare system is not the best i can admit but it's not this trash i mean taking a dying person in a taxi instead of an ambulance is a very very normal thing in ghana because there are more cars for government officials than ambulances in the country but it's still not this trash i'm sorry at least my experience moving on sierra goes to the police to get a police report and the police are acting unnecessarily stupid ghana's police system is not great but it's not this trash in this scene they made the police look incredibly stupid you won't believe some of the things they said. Like, they, let's just look at some. Good afternoon, officers. Good afternoon, how are you? Fine, thank you. How can we help you? I was asked from the hospital to come here and get a police report before they could attend to a dying patient. Police report for what? For a man that was shot by criminals. Or for a man that was shot by some policeman. Is that what you are saying? What kind of stupid question is that? Who wrote that in the script? She just said the person was shot by criminals. No, officer. But a man that was shot by some criminals, I saw the whole scene and I took him to the hospital. And he's now lying helplessly in the hospital, awaiting a report before he could be attended to. Are you saying that you witnessed the whole incident? Yes, that's what she just said. So where are the criminals? Where are they? <laughs> Jesus Christ. This, one, this scene is so... Incredibly, like, it's so stupid. I never knew that a witness was supposed to come to the police station with the criminals. What's he supposed to do? He's supposed to catch the criminals and come and show them to you for you to know that it was real? They entered their car and they drove off. Drove off to where? <laughs> like, it's uh, unbelievably stupid. I, ca I can't believe that they wrote this in the script. Oh, officer, how am I supposed to know that? Exactly. So, madam, where is the man? Ah, ah, listen. I think they let the police improvise. I'm sure they just let them improvise. It's impossible for someone to sit at, sit at a computer and write these lines. I told you he's in the hospital. But you're supposed to have come with him here first. 
even before going to the hospital. Yes, when somebody gets shot and they're dying, you don't take them to the hospital to save their life. You, you take them to the police to get a report first before you take them to the hospital to save their life. Once again, I refuse to believe that somebody sat down at their computer and wrote this script. Uh, I've not looked at the script right there in the credits. I'll look at it. Whoever it is, I don't believe that you, are, you, you wrote this. And if you did, how did you get a job? How? Then could someone please follow me to the hospital and... And do what? Do you think you don't know our way that you can come here and detain to us? The only accurate police thing in the scene is the way that guy is talking. Look here, young lady. If you don't live here, I will throw you inside cell. If you don't live here, well, I will throw you in cell. But the main thing over here is that through it all, Okay, through her going to the police, having that whole interaction, coming back to the hospital, Raj is still alive and is still bleeding out. He's, he's, he's alive enough to even cough and, <laughs> and start. <laughs> At this point, you can see that the Sobolo and the tomato paste has stayed for too long that it started to look like chocolate. So that scene ends with Gloria Safu before she was thick and bootylicious, giving Sierra some kind of prescription to send Raj to a pharmacy. Going to the pharmacy when you're sick instead of the hospital is a very, very Ghanaian thing. Like you could be, if somebody found out they had HIV, they probably could go to the pharmacy and ask them for paracetamol. Hurry up, hurry up. So Sierra takes him there, they give him treatment, she goes to meet Raj's mom and takes the mom to Raj and Raj is fine. Now while all of that is going on, Beyonce and her friends are also having their own discussion in their house. I have gotten the note from my father. <laughs> yes. yes! You see, I have heard repeatedly about this game. The terrain is rough, this is tough, and that is tough, whatever, but... Another scene with completely useless information that does nothing to further the plot. Beyonce is telling them that the father has gotten her into, into politics, right? as I was saying in the beginning. And then, in the scene, they, they do this. I am here to prove a point. The game is tough. Lily, I'll play. See, I am a woman. And I know the enormous power that I possess. I know my audience. Good. Now you see, it is only a tactless one that fails. All, All we need is precision and precision. <laughs> Is that a slogan that you have in your friend group? Is this something that you guys say all the time? Because it seems like a very long sentence for all of you to be able to say together. Let me know if you have a friend group and you have a long ass slogan that you guys all say together. Let me know, okay? So three weeks later, Raj is fine. Everything is fine. He's healed and all. But then he has a problem. He's looking for Sierra. He's looking for the girl who saved his life. Is anything the matter? But you've not been your usual self. But he can't find her because his mom didn't take the girl's number. And so he has an argument with his mom, you know, a short argument. Not that you were very I don't, I don't believe it. How somebody can save my life and you don't even get their phone Shh. number? I want to have you talk to me with such a tone. Raj's mom is played by Kalsum Sinari before she was thick. By the way, that woman's transformation was very shocking. Like, we all knew her for being incredibly slim. And then all of a sudden, one time she came, she did a movie and she was big. We don't know how it happened, but... We are glad he did. He's looking for her all over. He's asking people around the neighborhood, but he can't find her. And he's very, very desperate to find Sierra. Sierra, where are you? Where are you? Where can I find you? Bro, that phone, classic, bro. It was everywhere. I used to play um, Asphalt 6, Asphalt 6 on that phone. So fast forward, Raj and his friend go to the club one night and this brings us to the scene that we played in the beginning. And over here is where we get the greatest R&B performance in history. Queen Sierra! Now when I first heard that song, I took a step back, okay, because the melodies, the composition, the, 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 the lyrics, everything in the song was so trash. I don't know, did they make Jackie Appiah write the song herself? Because that's the only explanation, because she's not a songwriter, so you know. So we're not going to hold her to a very high standard of music. But if not, if somebody was, was paid to write this song, fraud, okay, biggest fraud in the history, because what is this song? So Raj finds the girl and he says to his friend that he is in love with the girl. She's a club girl. Damn, I've already fallen in love with her. So, I guess, love at second sight. I don't know about you, but if I was in love with somebody and I heard them singing a song like that, everything would vanish. Okay, the love would just evaporate quickly. When you feel it, don't hesitate to take it. It's like a mustard seed that goes from my heart. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the first man in history to take a selfie. It's a mystery, oh girl, I know you feel me. 
Cause love is a dangerous game of the heart Wait, did she say, oh girl, I know you feel me? Is this a lesbian song? Oh girl, I know you feel me Back then? Cause if it's a lesbian song I I've changed my mind, okay, the song is nice <laughs> Doesn't that make you gay? The way Jackie Apia took the Team World Cup is what makes it 100 times better So Raz goes outside to meet her and gives the most underwhelming proposal I have ever heard in my life. Sierra. Hi Sierra. Why are you breathing so hard? Well, how long did you run? It's just from the inside to the outside. What, what is this? What are we doing here? If you don't have stamina, how are you going to satisfy the girl? I want to tell you something. It might be a little strange or too early to say. But I, I'm in love with you. <laughs> Right, you don't even know me. Yes, exactly. Very, very good observation. I know. I know I don't know you, but I'm just convinced. I'm just convinced deep down inside that, that I'm in love with you. When? And for me, that's all that is, that is important. That's all that matters. Ooh, I'm flattered. Woo! I'm flattered. <laughs> it's only what the heart feels. And that's what I feel. Perhaps you might be thinking of just getting me into your bed, you know, as usual boys think. This can never be future, okay, because his relationship with Sierra in real life completely did. Let me know. Sierra, seriously? I love you. Now I want you to take note of how fast Raj fell in love with Sierra because it's going to be a very very important part of the story. It's going to come up again really really soon. So yeah, they start dating, she takes Raj to go and meet her sister. Also, is that not Hakim? From Mentor One. Is that not that guy? The Kumasi guy? And beloved in return is the only thing that I have desire. Yeah, that's him. I guess the music didn't work out because reality shows are shit. And the next scene is where everything comes together. This is where things get really juicy. And this is where I have to cut the video because the full video right now is about one hour long and I was thinking about whether to drop a one hour video but I didn't think that was a good idea so I did a poll and some of you guys said I should drop, I should break it up, the break it up people won. So I'm breaking it up, I will post the next part tomorrow or maybe two days from now but of course if you're watching it 90 years from now then you can just watch the other video right now. So yeah I still want to ask you to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell i will ask you to leave a comment below let me think about the video let me know what you think about the video let me know if you like this kind of video this movie breakdown style of video i think i said that again in the second part of the outro because that's just supposed to be the second part so yeah um let me know what you think about the video let me know if you like this kind of content um if you want me to do more of this movie kind of content let me know in the comments below and i'll see you guys soon in another video sing the song I will never ever ask you to like and subscribe but you go fish share my video if you know you're feeling my fine People are gonna never ever ask you to like and subscribe But you go fish share my video if you know you're